Yeah, we're going to look ahead to Claire Kilkenny now. We did go a Limerick uh, significantly yesterday. Delighted to welcome to the show this morning the former Kilkenny hurler, uh, former Kilkenny star, Kieran Joyce, and Brendan Bugler, who of course won the All Ireland with uh, Claire back in 2013. Brendan and Kieran, good morning. How are things? Morning, folks. Good morning. Thanks for hopping on, lads. Uh, much appreciated as per usual. Brendan, uh, might start with yourself. Uh, the injury concerns, I guess, with Clare coming into this game were, were some of the big talking points. David McInerney and John Conlon, though, look like they will be fit. So uh, that's a huge boost for Clare. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure what the story with Connor is going to be. I know he's he's named to start, but uh, I suppose we won't really know until until throwing on Sunday. But um, look, when you're going up to an All-Ireland semi-final, you're playing Kilkenny, um, you're after losing to them by 12 points last year you know the one thing Clare we wanted to, is a full squad to pick from and you know when you're when you have players like Conor Cleary like John Conlon like David McInerney who have so much experience you, you know that that's Clare need that on Sunday so um, if we have all three of them great if we have two out of three of them uh, I'd say that'll probably be a little bit more realistic but um, you know they're, they're they're really 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 good players for Clare for and I suppose they have that physical presence against uh, physical Kilkenny half forward. So um, yeah, look at it's great news if we have all three of them. Yeah, for Brendan, for Conor Cleary, he was named to start in the Munster final, if I remember correctly. He didn't play in the end, but his absence was felt. Like how much of a loss would he be if he's not out there this weekend? Yeah, I think actually, right. Like you look at the full back position for Clare for for a number of years prior to Brian Lowen coming in, and um, you know there was a lot of chopping and changing, and it was a problem position for us. You know, and Connor played a lot of his hurling out at centre back, and he, you know, Brian decided to put him back full back and had faith in him there, and and he's really excelled. And the thing about Connor is he just goes about his business so quietly, and he does a great, great job for Clare. And I suppose it wasn't until we were missing him, he hardly ever misses a game, you see, and it wasn't until we were missing him that you really felt his loss, you know. So um, I suppose, especially in the Munster final, Connor had, he'd been used to Mark and Erngelan, Erngelan on a numerous of occasions. And, um, you know, more often than not, you know, he broke even or got better than Erne. So, um, yeah, sure, obviously, like his presence was, was clearly, um, or his absence was clearly, you know, felt come once to final day. But, you know, he suffered a serious injury. I just hope that that, it, that it's cleared up and he will be uh, he will be available for Sunday. Kieran, um Kilkenny in an All-Ireland semi-final just appears to be a different prospect to Kilkenny at, at some other points in the year. Uh a big game team. Paul Murphy was was chatting to, to Joe and off the off the ball during the week, and he was talking about how he never lost an All Ireland semi final. Um, is that something that will be in these Kilkenny players' heads as well? Because even if you look at the performance last year, twelve point win, as Brendan says, maybe the gap has has been narrowed though. You'd imagine between between now and then, um, but still, a semi final, Kilkenny will be confident. Uh, they will, yeah, they will. Of course, um, look, it's a sense of deja vu. Um, I remember last year up at the match and. I think once John Connell wasn't out, wasn't wasn't in the team, and you know we knew at half time the kind of game was effectively over. But it's going to be a different prospect this year. Um, I think Clare in a, are in a, a lot better position. Kilkenny, I suppose, is the unknown on our side. I suppose because we've had we haven't had a settled fifteen there um, for the last number of games. We've had a few injuries. A um, couple of players have stepped up. Tom Field has come into the, into the game. Uh, David Blanchfield has really established himself this year. You know, we kind of only seen glimpses of him in the All Ireland final last year when he came on. So it, 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 it'll be interesting to see what the starting 15 is um, and how Kilkenny will, will, will feel that matchup. <clears throat> I suppose, from Kilkenny's point of view, um, they show glimpses of, of the old Kilkenny. Um, you, know, they're, you know, they're clinical at times, but the one worry was that they've let teams back into games, uh, especially to turn around the goal we had, even though I suppose we, we got the win. Um, produced as however it was but you know that's probably the one the one thing they're going to to worry about in terms of um, proper patch for Clare you know can Clare put us to the sword you know are we going to be able to sustain that uh, and that so yeah look it's, it's, it's I think it's going to be a completely different game to last year uh, I think it's going to be um, really interesting in terms of the matchups uh, how Kilkenny will, will, will figure their matchups um, because I know look last year Kilkenny you know uh, Mikey Butler took Tony Kelly you know, Hugh Lawler was on Peter Duggan at the time and they really just nullified the threat that Clare had. Um, and that would, I think, look, Clare probably have a couple more strengths to their bow uh, this year. Um, but I suppose Kilkenny will be looking at how they're going to get the matchups. Will Richie be playing back? Richie Reed sweep, sweeped up a lot of ball last year. You know, hopefully he's fit to come back in. So hopefully we'll, we'll know probably t- tonight, I think they'll end the team. So we'll know tonight then how we're going to be lined up. 
You yeah. would have sorry, go on ahead, Ashton. I'm just on that point. I'm wondering, do you think Mikey Butler will take on Tony Kelly again this year? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd say he, he probably relished the challenge, you know, even going up and getting the goals in the final. So he's he's quite adept. He can play <laughs> any. And I, I suppose last year, I know he's been an awful lot in midfield, you know, and he was winning ball and he was, he was given the right option where. I know sometimes myself and Paul Reverend midfield at times back in the day we just we just go route one, uh, put snow on it into the air. But um, <laughs> you know uh, he's 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 a different prospect, you know, and he he, he kind of plays with no fear, uh, and you can see that. So ideally, probably they probably would, you know. Um, but it, it depends on how clear we line out. Like Shane O'Donnell is lined out for full forward. You know, look, we know Hugh Lawler is very established. Whoever goes in on you, you know, he should be able to handle. You know, will they put Peter Duncan in there? You know, so it, it depends on the matchups and it depends on whether Kenny are going to follow him or whether they're going to stay in their positions and, and obviously mark whoever comes in. But I would assume, I suppose, what worked last year um, will probably, you know, they'll probably try that at the start and see. But I suppose the Kenny full back line. You know, Tommy Walsh in there is is very established guy as well. He's you know he's very tidy hurler, um, and that. So it, it depends on who, who how clear line up especially. And I suppose the first five minutes you'll really see in terms of how they line up, who's who's going to take who, and will they start following the man. Tony Kelly, um, Brendan has. Um, well, I, I, we've probably run out of superlatives to use to describe Tony Kelly, but uh, maybe throw us out a few more there. Like, what, what's he like to to uh, what, to play with? I guess, but also he's just added so much to this uh, Clare team and three four the last day in the quarter final against Dublin. And some people were saying he didn't even play that well. So we all know how good Tony is. He's a, he's a terrific. He's a terrific player, terrific hurler. Um, what Tony has been doing the last three or four years for Clare, we had seen that at club level for you know five years previous to that, and uh, I suppose we'd seen that before that back in in 2013 when he got Player of the Year. So I suppose he's really since he's become captain, he's really grown into that leadership role, and um, his performances have been you know over the last couple of years, it's been all star, it's been all star stuff every single year. So he's a huge, huge, huge player for Clare, and I think I think last year a lot of people are forgetting that. You know, going into that All Ireland semi final, Tony did pick up a little bit of a knock. You know, in the extra time period of the Munster final last year, and that kind of carried into the Wexford game, and and, and obviously into the All Ireland semi final. So he wasn't at full tilt. He wasn't at hundred percent. And I know Mikey Butler had a good game that day, but you know, this year is just a, a completely a completely different year. And I think. Dicey was on about there about matchups here and matchups there. We won't know what's going to be the story until the ball is thrown in. On Sunday, and that's the reality of it. Like you know, I'd imagine Kilkenny will will look at the Clare full back line if Conor Cleary isn't there, and they might bombard a couple of high balls in there and test out the boys. And you know, we're going to have to be really, really on it there. But I suppose from a Clare point of view, going up last year, you know, you were you were, you were really, really confident on the back of a real good Munster campaign. And then you know, after 15 minutes, Kilkenny just came out and they absolutely just blitzed us. So I suppose this year, what I'm looking at is to see where the energy levels at. You know, and I was really, really happy, I suppose, leaving the Gaelic grounds against Dublin that there was no win in energy levels, you know, compared to the, the Munster Championship. And, you know, we were on it from the start, albeit, you know, the accuracy wasn't um, wasn't on song, especially in the first half, but the energy levels were there. And, and um, if they're not there, well, you're not going to give yourself, you know, much of an opportunity to win. And you could see that with Tipperary. You could see the same with Tipperary and Galway in the first 20 minutes. All we were on it. They were burning the intensity. They were burning the energy, and uh, Tip couldn't handle it. You know, and, and Liam Cheedy came out in the Sunday game afterwards, and he mentioned a stat about the number of turnovers and tackles Tipperary had against Limerick in the Munster Championship in comparison to what they had against Galway, and it was just chalk and cheese. So, and um, that's the big thing. It's about you know, Kilkenny are going to burn it, and I just hope that we can burn it as well. And Brendan, what's your view on the free taking situation with Clare? Is that a concern for for Brian Lowe? And I know they changed it up a little bit in the Munster final, and Tony went on them in the end. You know, Aidan McCarthy, Mark Rogers has been on them as well. So, what is your view on all of that? Yeah, it's it's look, we have we have good we, we have good free takers in Clare Ashling. Um, Aidan obviously is out the next day, so Mark Rogers was on him um, against Dublin, and he, you know, he, he struck him really, really well. So I'd imagine I'd see I, I'd, I'd have no problem with Mark hitting trees in an All Ireland semi final. He has that temperament. The one thing Mark has, you know, right throughout his underage career, you know, he's 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 got a lot of attention from defenders in this game and that game at club level, and his his temperament is exceptional. And um, you know, you need that as well when you're a free taker. That. That excellent temperament, and he's got it. So uh, I'd imagine I'd see him starting in the freeze anyway. And um, if things are going bad, we also have Tony is back up there anyway. 
uh, I suppose Kieran, we, we touched on, on Tony Kelly uh, with Brendan we should touch on TJ Reid with yourself as well it would be rude of us not to um, how he's still producing what he's producing at this stage is, is quite remarkable um, how, how can you see Claire marshalling him I don't want you obviously you're not going to give away state secrets and, and tell Claire how to do it but uh, if you were the Claire manager I guess what, how would you how would you I guess deal with TJ Reid um, that's a question I suppose with TJ last year he had an exceptional semi-final and final a lot of people are saying after the final with TJ oh you know form might have been there you know when they reached it so and, and throughout the year TJ I suppose you know he was, he was showing glimpses of it I suppose, from his, I suppose what we expect and that's the problem with likes TJ Tony Kelly they have exceptional games and you know that's the standard and if they don't hit that standard every day they say that they have a poor game but I suppose TJ, you know, the amount of assists, the amount of puck outs he wins and bringing other players into the game, you know, has been phenomenal for him. Um, so he, he will be a route one. Um, it's beautiful for Kenny. Uh, we go along an awful lot. Of still. We play through the lines at times. But um, I suppose the, the one the one concern I have for Kenny is at times that, you know, our half forward line at times, we, did, we didn't break the lines uh, here in Galway. It took Wally West to come on and really bring a big influence on that. You know, he broke the line a couple of times. You know, we got got a goal from it from him. And then even I think Dave Blanchard won a, won a ball. He broke the line as well. And then Mikey Butler was there to give it to us. So we, we need to be breaking the lines against Clare. Because we know Clare have an established half-back line. You know, if that half-back line starts, you know, they will, you know, if putting ball down top of the top of the it has really come on the last year or two. You know, we're not going to not going to have much headway. So TJ is the option in the full forward line. Um, he has exceptional hands. Um but I would say is if you're ever in front of DJ, you're in trouble. Um, you, you always need to be behind him. Uh, he's just a great guy to win a ball and he just finds his catch at the last second. So um, I'd say for any player, man, you want to make sure he's always behind DJ and, and, and always he's in front of the goal instead of having DJ in front of the goal. Another dangerous aspect as well, he's five points behind Patrick Horgan for the all-time leading scorer. So maybe that's something that'll be in the back of his mind as well. Yeah, oh yeah. You probably heard stories of DJ, like, you know, he, he talks when he betrays that kind of stuff, he cheese himself up, and he, you know, he kind of has many fine game competitions with himself as well. Um, I think Paul used that there a couple of weeks ago, but uh, yeah, he is that sort of character. You know, he's, he, he'll think about it, you know, but he won't, he won't, he won't see that as, as be all end all. He, I suppose TJ is a pure team player. Um, he's probably the most selfless player I've seen in terms of he wins the ball. Because his first instinct is not a score. His first instinct is to look around and see if a, a killer passes on. Mm. Mm. You know, we've seen that happen. Um, whereas, you know, other players might get the ball and they might say, oh, I'll take my score here. He just goes and he sees if it's a goal on first. No goal on first, then he takes the score. So he probably is. And that's why Tikeni has put so dependent on maybe in the last five or six years. Um, you know, Mark Joan has been there in the last couple of years. I think he'd be a goal threat. Obviously, old Cody there as well, real goal threats. And they have kind of stemmed the pool because the dependency is not really on TJ there. Um, I suppose TJ is still a root one. You know, he's that player that wins 30 ball. He's that player that wins a 60 40 ball that sometimes you teach yourself other players probably will win. TJ will win. And he'll, you know, he'll, he'll pick the right option. And like, even in the tensor final there, you know that. They had a corner seat there where he got to try to kick the ball and DJ actually lost his hurl. He went down, he attacked the lad with no hurl, he picked back up the hurley. He eventually then won the ball and, and I think it was um passed it off and then it was um it wasn't TJ who passed it off. But the thing about it is, you know, that was the seventy fifth minute. You know, he had the, the wearable to not uh, you know, get the lads to huddle in, you know, and that's the kind of experience he brings. Yeah. And was for us the last the last game you know the Chris Connor folks came in um, you know Connor would be featuring we did reach out when he came in he'd done a big job in the field you know obviously Wally came on most of the old guard and obviously he came on then and, and, and stayed the limelight you know but uh, like that's that's great to have but the experience is there youth is there as well so it's a nice blend but the one thing is yeah he depends on TJ still we're hoping he has a great step of final you know, and we probably will need him to have a Seven or an eight, I would think, to get over Clare. Uh, Brendan, the uh, the wide situation for Clare is that is that a concern going forward? Because even in the win over Dublin, early on in the game, especially, you know, the, the shooting accuracy just wasn't exactly there. Um, but is that something? I guess it's something that can be that can be 
stamped out of the game uh, in, in training you know you can work on on that so at least it's something that can be that can be fixed but it was a, was it a concern I guess uh, so far this season I don't think it was a concern so far this season Shane but uh, it was a little bit of a concern against Dublin and I think going going forward to this game it's definitely something they'll probably looked at in training and um, might have done a lot of shooting drills etc cetera, etc cetera. but I, I think it was funny in, in the Gaelic grounds that evening because all four teams were guilty of uh, really bad wives you know in, in the Galway Tipperary game you know it's the exact same story you know some ridiculous wise that you, you usually wouldn't see from you know top quality players so I think there was something in the wind or the way it was swirling around in the Gaelic grounds that evening so um, you know when you're leaving when you're leaving after a win and after scoring 526 I don't think you're going to look at the uh, shooting efficiency and think oh, this, is, this is a major major concern but Look at if you're nitpicking and you're looking at aspects where you can improve. Of course, you're going to look at you're going to look at that. And I think when you look back to 12 months ago, especially in the first half, Kilkenny, I think I think uh, to the best of my knowledge, only one wide, maybe two whites, right? And then down the other side, we were hitting um, with a lot of uncharacteristic whites. Um, Kilkenny's shooting efficiency was just off the charts in the first half. Now, look in the second half, we would have we would have beat them in the second half. But obviously, it wasn't enough, and uh, they still came out and beat those twelve points. So, yeah, when you get into Crow Park, you know, it, it, as we've seen this season, it's just such fine margins, and it's 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 a ball here, it's a ball there, it's a point here, it's a point there. So, when you're looking at everything and all these fine margins, um, when it comes to shooting efficiency, and Brian alluded to that after the Munster final as well against Limerick, that it just wasn't good enough. Um, when you're looking at everything, it needs to be on point on Sunday. Yeah, going into the game, Brendan, how, how does it feel in Clare? Like, what's the buzz like? I suppose talking to people, they would think the Clare maybe are slight favourites going in. They've been the team of the championship so far, I would say. What does it feel like in Clare? Are you confident? Um, I think wary more than anti-national. Like, you have to be realistic here as well. And uh, I've said it numerous times here in the last 10 minutes about the, the fact that Kikini beat Clare last year by 12 points in the dollar in the semi-final. You know, and if we can... If Clare can go and Clare can turn around that, it's going to see. She's, you know, this team has has come on leaps and bounds in twelve months. I do think we're going into the game in a better position than we would have gone into it last year. But you know, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects, a lot of things to take into consideration. I think the Crow Park thing is is one. You know, Kilkenny are well used to playing in Crow Park. Kilkenny are well used to winning in Crow Park. Clare. Yeah, we were up there in 2018, we were up there last year, but we didn't win either of those games. And the last time we won was back in 2013. So there's a reason why Brian and the management team look for the most defiant we played in the Gaelic grounds and that was because of the, the, familiar, the familiarity with the Gaelic grounds you know the order of the day the, the routine eating times etc etc those Kikini boys are well used to travelling to Crow Park and it's just you know it's different for Clare you know it's different for Clare going up there and I just hope we we have learned from the experience of going up there last year and playing in Ireland in the semi-final and hopefully can rectify the wrongs this time around but really Ashley to answer your question yeah, confident, but really, really wary. You know, you're playing a team like a Kenny. We've only beaten them once ever in championships. So, yeah, that's the way it is. Kieran, it was never going to be an easy job coming in off the back of Brian Cody's tenure uh, with Kilkenny, but yeah. Derek Ling has certainly so far this year done a done a, a fairly decent job, it has to be said. You would have been been involved when, when Derek was, was selector under Brian. So, I guess no surprise that, that he's come on leaps and bounds and, and I guess taken over that mantle with ease. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, look, absolutely. You know, he's he stepped in, um, and obviously, you know, does hasn't been a massive change. And I suppose in the panel, I suppose yes, in the terms of the rebuilding piece. But yeah, look, Derry came in. Derry could have a good relationship built up with a lot of them guys. You know, he was obviously involved with, under Brian there for a number of years. Um, I suppose his probably management style is a little bit different to Brian. You know, he he probably be more talkative to the to the players and that kind of stuff in terms of interactions. And I suppose I suppose the next way I suppose how how management is kind of going. Um, and obviously he brought in a very good backroom team. You know, there's a lot of experience there in the backroom team. You know, you look at Peter Barry there. Um, you know, he's he's a very very good coach. Um, even at, at club level, with James Stevens there. You know, he's he's been highly regarded there for the last number of years. And obviously Michael Rice. You know, we all know Michael Rice is um, um, you know pedigree with Kenny as well so a lot of them guys came in for obviously from the under 20s scene and I suppose they kind of broke the back in terms of winning All-Ireland with the under 20s because you know the last time we actually won All-Ireland under 20s I was playing you know that was I think it was 2008 like you know we'd lost three finals since and that was kind of a in, in Kenny it was kind of unusual you know so 
that was kind of a, a great kind of watershed moment I suppose for Kenny again he's now underage that were starting to win under 20s again and you know that team then obviously progressed into the senior ranks and you know he's there you know and I suppose just plenty of players coming hopefully we, we, we'll see that um, I suppose but at the moment you know he's, he's he's able to get the most out of out of the team that he has he's managing the, the you know the older cohort which is which is important as well you know he has them kind of peaking at the right time uh, and and I suppose that's what can he do you know we're very good at that you know peak for semi-finals finals you know at fitness level at intensity level you know and you kind of go up through the gears and, and that's what they look like they're doing at the moment and you know if we have a full strength panel and a full strength team and you know pick the starting 15 that we want you know I think we'll be there so fingers crossed that we get that It feels that a very dangerous prospect to have a Kilkenny team going into an All-Ireland semi-final as maybe slight underdogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. We'll we take love that. being called underdogs. Um, <laughs> so we will, but uh, no, absolutely. I think, you know, um, I, look, I think the mood in Kenny is, you know, we all know that last year's game, you know, it won't be that way. We all know, look, Clear probably, you know, the, the, the Monster Championship have come through. You know, they are a very weathered team. You know, they are, you know, physically weathered as well, you know, in terms of some of the games and even, you know, the games at Limerick as, as well, the intensity, you know, some of those games, I suppose, we haven't seen, I suppose, for the year. You know, has Kenny experienced that yet? We probably haven't. Haven't you know we had glimpses of it there against Galway, so you know that's probably the one the one thing you know that you'd say you know has Kenny been really tested like Clare have been tested yet, um, and that and you know that could, that could come in, in in the semi finals you know will we be up for it absolutely you know hopefully we just have the legs and we'll have the the mentality to you know match that intensity that we think Clare is going to bring. Uh, briefly, lads, before we let you go, we should get the predictions. Um, start with yourself, Brendan. Tell us who the two finalists are going to be. We'll, we'll, uh, you can tell us the winner of Galway Limerick as well, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah. looking like it's, there probably won't be a puckle ball between between Galway or Limerick. There probably won't be a puckle ball between Clare and Kilkenny. Uh, if I was to pick the Galway one, I'd probably, I'd probably say Limerick. I'd probably say Limerick by a couple of points. Um, just because they have a know how they, 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 they know how to eke out results. Um and you can when Limerick get to when Limerick get to Crow Power, they're just um, they're in serious outfit. So I'll probably go for Limerick in that one. Um with our one, uh it's 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 a lot more difficult because as I said, I'm just hoping that Claire bring up a performance that has bundles of energy like they have shown in the Munster Championship. And I do believe that we didn't bring that last year and if we can bring that this year I do believe we'll be in with a chance but you'd have to say I don't know where they're coming up with Clare as, as being favourites for this game they can hear after winning the Leinster <laughs> Championship they lost in all Ireland final last year by by less than a puck of a ball like it's it's it, and, and they beat Clare by 12 points last year so I think the bookies if they're putting Clare as favourites they've got it have a, have a chat to John there about the, the odds there will you <laughs> I think they've uh, I think they've gotten well around but um yeah, I think if we can deliver a performance, I would be I would be hopeful that we'll be there there about but uh, yeah, sure look at if I had to pick it, I'll go Claire Limerick. Lovely. You're off that fence, Kieran, with yourself. <laughs> Oh yeah, Bugs. Bugs is well used to going on the fence, so he's in his long grass. <laughs> um, but uh, no, look, I look I think with the Gaul Limerick game, you know, I suppose we haven't seen the level of consistency of Gaul to say that, you know, can they stay with Limerick, you know, for seventy minutes? I don't know. You know, you just don't know. You know, with, with Galway, they could they come out one day and they could beat any team in the country. Another day, then you know they show glimpses of it, but the consistency is not there. But look, we do know what Limerick have. They have consistency. They've shown that throughout. So that's why you know I would see Limerick would be the favourites there. I'd see Limerick probably coming through that. On the other side, um, Clare to Kenny, I look. I do think it'd be an awful lot more closer game. Um, I think obviously for Kenny to win, we need to score goals, um, and that's the the big the big thing. That's obviously for us. We have been scoring goals. Matthew Keown, I suppose, had a hamstring uh, issue there. So the word from the camp is everyone's fully fit and able, apart from McCary, who's out for illness reasons. But um, you know, I think if we have the full start of fifteen that we want, that have to start um, and the experience there. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a fantastic battle. You know, like even the cornerbacks for, for Rory Hayes and Hogan are, are, you know, two exceptional cornerbacks for Clare. And the battles they're going to have a Massey and an own Cody are going to be, you know, they're going to be brilliant. So, you know, th that's the kind of the key battles. You know, if we can get on top, you know, in a couple of key areas, I think we will win it. Um, I think, obviously, from us, it's obviously stem the tide. You know, if we 
get the matchups with, with and, and subdue Tony and you know uh, Mark Rogers and you know even Ian Galvin is a, is a fantastic player as well you know he came on he had a massive impact there the last day so you know if we can curta- curtail a couple of those key men for them Kenny will you know dog the game out so I would say Kenny by three Kenny by three okay interesting so a Limerick Kenny final for you Kieran, and a Limerick Clare final for you Brendan at least your arses aren't sore anymore you're, you're off that fence <laughs> fair play you. you're not sitting on it anymore well done uh, we got you there eventually lads fair play Kieran, Brendan enjoy the match of the weekend thanks a million thanks, thanks guys. guys.